Hi everyone, my name is Holly and this is a book haul and a reading wrap up. I know, it's an insane concept for a bookworm. But I have actually read a good portion of the books I'm hauling today. This has never happened before. These two stacks right here shine a freaking spotlight. I have read most of Where's My Booktuber Award? So it just didn't make sense to me to film a book haul, vaguely mention my thoughts on the book, and then film a wrap up, and it practically be the same video but with slightly more detail. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start by hauling the books I have read first. And the first one is The Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie. This beautiful finished copy was sent to me from Orbit Books. Thank you so so much. And let's take a moment. It is gorgeous. This is the 12th book I have read by Joe Abercrombie, all-time favorite author without a freaking doubt. But I'm going to be honest with you. This channel right here, honesty is the best policy. The first 100 pages of this was like a three star for me. Oh, that hurts my freaking heart. I was pissed and I can't even explain why because it's a freaking spoiler, but something huge happens at the end of A Little Hatred, the first book to this particular series. And I had to wait a year for this to see what happened and it gets brushed aside so hard. But Joe Abukami's way of writing, I feel like is a lot of build up for an explosive ending. I love that and that is literally what we have. Have here. Since this is a sequel to a series and what, like the ninth book within the first all universe, that's all I'm going to say, but I ended up giving this one five stars, even though with me being salty about the first portion of it, because of how it all came to be eventually in the end, the plot is fantastically twisty and complex, especially in the last third of the book. Do Abercrombie fans, you will be overjoyed by how things are wrapped up. Abercrombie ramps up its unresolved frictions that were created in A Little Hatred, except for the ending, and even in the other series, like the First Law universe, there are some stuff mentioned in here that gets resolved. I urge any self-respecting fantasy reader who haven't read Driver Crumb yet to pick up his books immediately. Preferably in order, because it would be much more rewarding for you. Um, actually, I ended up giving this one 4.5, I think. Yeah, I think that was a more realistic rating for me. The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart, another book sent to me from Orbit Books, and another, okay, you know how there are like AAA games? I'd consider this a AAA book, highly anticipated by many, and the hype is real. I actually did a Should You Read It episode for this one where I gave you my pros and cons and first impressions, so I highly recommend watching that video. I go way more in depth on what this book is actually about, because the summary barely even scratches the surface of what the book truly encompasses. The author wrote a stunning and satisfying book with amazing world building with captivating new magic that has similar notes to Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. It's set within a very tropical setting with many islands. We experience many of them. There are sailing, seaside caves. It's a beautiful world with many dark secrets. It also boasts elements of Asian culture, so it's very rich and appealing to my fantasy soul. I gave this one five out of five stars and it's a new favorite of mine. Definitely the best debut I've read so far this year. And I honestly don't think anything will top it. Dead Man in a Ditch by Luke Arnold. This is the sequel to The Last Mile in Sunder City. And honestly, my love for this series is so on level with Sinlin and Sin by Josiah Bancroft. Though I didn't give this book or even its predecessor five stars, it has such a special place in my heart because I love the world so much. And this is like noir investigative detective story like uh boring but okay hold on before you click away imagine that in a world where there's a variety of creatures and humans who live together and magic has suddenly disappeared and all the creatures are suffering from it it's literally the wolf among us like 2AT the main character is literally Big B so one of my very very minuscule complaints about the last mile in Sunder City was that it had its slower moments not to the sequel people. After finishing this, it felt like I had read 10 books. It is one fast paced intense scene after another, after another, and after another. It's absolutely insane how much Luke Arnold smushed into this book. So I ended up giving this one four out of five stars. It's unlike anything I've ever read in a book form anyways, and I see myself revisiting this world often. I don't know if there's going to be a third book, but man, I hope there is. 
The Once and Future Witches by Alex Yuharo. Can we just talk about how much Orbit is killing it in the cover game? It is so pretty. Like if there was ever book porn, this is it censor this shit. So I actually haven't finished this yet, but I'm about halfway through it, so I can't give you my full review yet, but I'm really enjoying it. It's very different from the 10,000 Doors of January. That book captured me immediately, like page one, and I was hooked, but this one took me a while for it to catch, but it long since has, and I have found that spot where I can appreciate the story. It's just been a very beautiful read so far. That's Alex Yuharo's specialty. Beautiful stories, beautiful buttery writing. It's another kind of magical realism-ish story. Set in 1893, we have three sisters who have been separated for seven years through unfortunate circumstances. And at the very beginning, they all find each other and a big mystery unfolds that connects their possibly witchy magic. It shows women banding together in secret to overcome obstacles and create a world more open and tolerant. It's for sure a feminism story that emphasizes hope. It is full of stories within a story, crafting together a world of magic evolving over the centuries. And I'm very curious on how it all ends. I just gotta finish it. Okay, so those are all the books I have recently hauled and read. I have three more books to haul and two backlist books to review. So let me just quickly show you the three other books I have gotten recently that I haven't read yet. And that first one's going to be The Doors of Eden. This is a brand new standalone coming from the Stephen King of sci-fi. This man, he pumps out sci-fi like every few months. It's insane. Like, how are you gonna write this thick boy and then write another thick boy like two months later? He's mostly known for his Children of Time series, which has made its rounds a lot in the book community. The bare bones of the story is that it's about two longtime friends and fans of cryptoid hunting who go in search of a creature, but only one comes back. The other just vanishes from the face of the earth. A few years later, that missing friend suddenly reappears, and that story she tells is kind of mind-blowing, apparently. It's an adventure story which kind of starts off as a bit of a mysterious portal fantasy and then turns into a survival story, and I'm very curious about it, and I can't wait to dive in. The Ikasar Falcon. This is the sequel to The Wolf of Yorin Yarrow. It's part of the Bitch Queen Chronicles, and if the name of the series doesn't make you want to read it like it does me just unsubscribe i'm just kidding don't i love you it's an adult fantasy every book in this haul is adult by the way it obviously has a strong female lead in a midst of an asian inspired world who has inherited a kingdom still teeming with the aftermath of a civil war the sequel by the way is a chunky monkey and i love the covers to the series and the final book that i am hauling today i think is the thousand deaths of ardor ben by Tyler Whitesides. I just got this today actually and it is a freaking beast around 730 pages of pure fantasy fun and it's blurbed by David Daglish, which is really exciting. He actually told me on Twitter that if Brandon Sanderson had written a Mission Impossible fantasy edition, this would be it. Like, I'm sold. So this trilogy is actually already out. It came out a few years ago, but Orbit is kind of rebranding it with brand new covers, and they definitely did it right because they're so beautiful. I mean, just look at this one. Orbit does the best covers, no competition. Illustrative fantasy all the way. So a lot of people compare this to The Lies of Locke Lamora. It's a very thievery heist kind of story with a cocky main character who gets pulled into a ruse unlike any other. I am super super excited to dive in. It's completed and it's bingeable. Okay, now the last two books I have here are the two books I have read recently. And that first one is Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. This is the Outcrate edition, by the way. I picked this up because I really wanted something quick and short and I've owned this for freaking ever. So I wanted to give it a try. I have a shelf of shame that I really want to do a video showing you what's on it. It's a shelf that I rarely touch, but it's building up to be like a freaking junk drawer at this point so tell me in the comments if you want to see that video i will say this did have a very addicting quality to it where you want to finish it to know what happens but it is one of the most generic ya fantasies i've ever read it was so bad it's told in two alternating point of views between two sisters set in a world where women have no rights men treat them as slaves pretty much men choose which woman they want they're pretty much sex slaves there's two mysterious brothers not a surprise i am just so 
over reading these types of stories. I have long since unhauled similar sounding ones. I gave it two out of five stars. Like I said, it's a digestible read, but there is nothing special here. And the last book I don't have a physical copy of, but that is The Sword of Kagan. Guys, I finally finished it. I finally read The Sword of Kagan. This was a better read with the lovely Jess from Stars Above Jess. I'll link her channel down below. She's been very into adult SFF lately, so I highly recommend checking her out. This book is an incredibly popular indie book. It has won so many awards. So let's begin. Trigger warnings for, well, everything. If you thought the poppy war was spicy, that's a marshmallow fluff compared to this. The story starts with the point of view of two characters. We have a 14-year-old boy and his mother, and they live up on a mountain in a village by the ocean. Now, this entire island keep to old warrior traditions that the rest of the world have completely forgotten about. In fact, it really threw me off when TV, video games, and even intercom tablets were mentioned. I had no idea what I was getting into. It it take me a little while for the story to get going as it takes a bit to get a good grasp on the world outside of the mountain. It's honestly so hard to describe the story. It's magic and plot sort of is basically Avatar The Last Airbender, where the Fire Nation attacked. I don't even want to tell you anything because the buildup is so suspenseful. There were times where I was lost in the beauty of it all, times where I was white knuckling through the, the intense action sequences, and times where my heart broke into pretty much the whole book, honestly. There was like a good 70% like take like the middle of the book is just you holding your breath the entire freaking time. There is no break from the action. It is constant. It is brutal. It is pure suffering. The hype is real. It's incredible. But I do have some negatives, and these negatives are going to seem like I didn't like the book, but no, almost the entirety of this book was five stars for me, except for the last 100 pages. They were so unsatisfying. 90% of the book was literally the author punching you in the face. This is your face, and this is the book. Just, that sounds, that sounds naughty. Stop it. And then the last 100 pages, it's like... <gasps> Just kidding. No, you made me suffer until this point. Keep going. I love brutal, sad endings. I don't know if that makes me a masochist, but I do, because those are the endings that make me think the most. And it just, it was a satisfying. One character flipped like a freaking switch and it felt like a cop-out to me. Jess even brought this up after we finished reading that she felt the backstory for the main character was pointless. And I have to agree, there's one flashback chapter with all of these characters that was supposed to show me how important their friendships were, and it just wasn't enough for me, and it's a big part of the ending. So if we thought the backstory was pointless, there's no way we were going to like the ending. Overall, I ended up giving this four stars, and I do want to say I have never read a 700-page book so fast. In my entire life, it seems so intimidating but both Jess and I flew through it. Alrighty, so those are all the books that I hauled and have read recently. Now, let's move on to the October Owl Crate, which I'm so excited about, like always. I feel like I always repeat myself when it comes to the Owl Crate. I am a rep for them. You can use my code HOLLY on your very first subscription to save some money. Now, let's see what is inside this box, because I know there's going to be a blanket. And I'm immediately seeing the blanket, and it's a tease. The theme for this box was a glorious haunting. Ooh, this is soft. So obviously there are words on it and a lot of fluff. I am so sorry. I wonder what book it is from. Okay, wait. Please don't tell me it's the Raven Boys. There's a raven on it. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and wary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. Is this Edgar Allan Poe? This is very emo. Ooh, it is! So it's the entirety of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe printed on the blanket. That's so cool. How the hell am I going to show you? Okay, so, oh, there we go, there we go. So that's like the top half, and it just continues on, and it continues. There's the bottom with the raven. That's so cool! Oh, hell yeah. Let me just get all settled in now. There we go. Next, we have a candle, the Black Flame Candle. It's gonna smell like vanilla and bourbon? Oh, 
Oh, wow. This kind of smells like dead trees. In a good way. Nope, I'm getting the bourbon smell. I don't taste the bourbon. Next is this box. Monsters were unrestrained, unbound, and beautiful in their destruction. Coffee spoons. Oh, this is inspired by the bone houses. That's like my, one of my all-time favorite YA fantasy books. It's like medieval zombies. Perfect October read. I highly recommend that book. Oh, this is the coolest thing. I just want to hang these on my wall. So that is what they look like. There is a silver one, a black one, and a gold one. And they have uh, skulls as the shape of the actual spoon part. It's so cool. I was going to say I'm going to use this for cereal in the morning, but the milk would just fall through. That's disappointing. Ooh, we have a lip balm. Sleepy Hollow. Uh, pumpkin spice flavored. Oh my god, I am that basic bitch, man. I wish they would include a lip balm in every single box because I freaking live in lip balm. So if the book is what I think it is, which I can, I can see it, it is. <laughs> this is like my favorite box ever, maybe. And then we have the monthly pin, which is a hand holding a rose. It's so pretty and so emo. I love it. My blankie's falling. Oh, we have one more thing before the book, which is this. Oh, it's an enamel bookmark. That's so cute. I'm going to be honest with you. I might make this into a necklace. I would use it far more as a necklace than an actual bookmark. I'm going to do that. This is way too pretty not to wear on my face or my neck. Okay, so we have come to the book and it is Horrid by Katrina Leno. I'm super excited for this one. It sounds really creepy. It's a YA horror and it takes place in like a creepy house, which I absolutely adore. I love those vibes. And here is the exclusive cover. I will post a picture of what the original looks like. They changed the flowers, if I remember correctly. Also, this is wrapped in plastic. Is there going to be explicit content in this? You know when you buy a manga from like Barnes & Noble and if there's some naughty scenes in the book, they wrap it in plastic? I'll create- are we getting to become adult here? Is there nudity? I don't mind. Oh, this is so pretty. It's very shiny, like the roses are shiny. There we go. I'm blinding you now. So this is signed by the author. Is there anything underneath the nakedness? So there is not. Ooh, I almost missed that. Wow. Okay, so underneath the dust jacket, we have this illustration. It is so cool. This is like perfect for Inktober. You know how artists... I uh, do a bunch of ink drawings for Inktober every single day. I don't know if they're going to be doing it this year because of the uh, drama. But look at that. Oh, it's creepy. Look at the window. That one window is lit up. I want to know why. It also comes with a author letter. And yeah, that is it for this Owlcray box. Wow. They totally won me over. I'll create marry me. I actually plan to read this soon. So if you want to get the October box, it is going to be Legends and Lore, which like, like looking at this freaking card is totally me. This has Holly written all over it. There's like a medieval knight, castle, this is me. And every single box will include a unique and useful item created by fabric designer Janine LaCour. Cool. And that is it for this video. Be sure to subscribe. I upload videos every single week. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really supports me so, so much. Leave a comment about anything. It could be anything. Go ahead and follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at Holly Hearts Books and on Twitter at Holly Knees. Everything is linked down below for you. And until I meet again, Happy reading.